Bravo! Bravissimo! <laughs> Laura Schwendinger, Professor! Thank you so much Aww. for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Ching. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about what we just heard, the last excerpt. Well, that, that's the final chorus of the, of the opera I wrote about Artemisia Gentileschi, a, a very famous Baroque female painter. Um, she was famous in her own time, which is amazing. And she was the first female member of the, of the um, art group in um, the Accademia in Florence. And um, that was, a, I mean, that was an amazing thing that a woman would be accepted into the, the profession in that way and so highly revered. Um, but um, she's she was famous for many years because she was raped by her, her art tutor and her father had him put on trial. And um, it was a famous trial. It was like the O.J. Simpson trial. You know, mm -hmm. everyone in Italy knew about this trial. It went on for years. And during the trial, she was tortured to verify her testimony against him, which is terrible. You know, it's a terrible thing that, uh, you know, women had to go through those moments just to mm -hmm. just to testify to their truths. Right. And um, that final choir is is. Um, Schwendinger and a little bit of someone named Barbara Strozzi, who was, was a composer at the same time as Monteverde, mm. and a great composer, as you can imagine, you know, even though there's a little bit of me in there, you know, at the very end, we hear her aria kind of come out, and the words che si può fare, what they mean is, what can be done? Mm. Because um, this opera arc is about her life, in these tableau of her paintings. And we see her paintings come to life and they tell her story because many of her paintings are semi-autobiographical. It's often her visage that she paints into these canvases. Mm. And um, and at the end of the opera, we find out, half about halfway through, we start finding out, but by the end, we really find out that mm. she's losing her eyesight. Mm. So she sings, um, you know, what do I do without my art? And without my art, I I, ha I need my art to live. Mm. But she's losing her eyesight and she can't paint. 
Mm. This is that eternal question, Casey Pofade, what can be done? Mm. Um, and during a pandemic, I've got to say it resonates, you know? <laughs> right, right. So who are, who are the production? Who, who is this production done? This, this particular production, it was produced by two different companies this last year. And um, this uh, company, wonderful company in the San Francisco Bay Area called the Left Coast Chamber Ensemble. Mm -hmm. And Anna Pressler is their um, artistic director. And we heard Nikki Einfeld, who's this beautiful soprano, um, and Bethany um, Coughland, who played Artemisia. And they were the ones left on the stage at the very end. Mm -hmm. But you also hear some of the male characters to fill out that big choir sound there, that, like the fates, mm -hmm. you know. Right. It's so well done. And it's... Uh very polished looks like a production very nice they were they were amazing yeah, yeah. i mean the the group is extraordinary they've won many awards in the bay area mm -hmm. and um uh the singers um are bay area singers mainly mm -hmm. and um i mean there's so much talent there yeah it, it was also produced in an orchestral version in new york Wow. With the with the Trinity um, group, Trinity mm -hmm. Wall Street and Julian Wachner's yeah. ensemble Novus, right. and right. Um, that was an incredible production. We'll see some excerpts if you share some of those excerpts. Yes, um, and they're very different productions because one is a chamber ensemble, so it's yeah. a small kind of more intimate experience. Yeah, and the other is this you know chamber orchestra. Yeah, it has so much sound and right. and richness to it and right. the production is very spare compared uh -huh. to this other production which is you know kind of baroque and right. you know lavish right right, <laughs> right. so uh sorry what what will you say uh oh first of all let's um i like to read uh uh, uh parts of your very impressive uh, biography by the way um the short version biography is in <laughs> in the description of youtube below so our audience can check it out and also um laura has a, a great uh, website and uh has even um you know like very very thoughtfully have three different versions of biography because sometimes you know um presenters they 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 only want shorter ones right and then you know you have a much much bigger and longer uh history of music and life so anyway let me let me read a little bit i, I sometimes get a little nervous about reading those names you know? <laughs> so you, your name yeah your name i was asking you earlier where is this from laura uh schwendinger is it right yay schwendinger audience oh, from switzerland now i know <laughs> so laura schwendinger professor is a uh, professor of music and head of music uh composition at university of wisconsin madison the first winner of the Berlin Prize in Music. Um, her music has been championed by Don uh, Upshaw, Upshaw yeah. the Auditor, and Jack Quartet, um, Jenny Cole, I know Jenny Cole, and Jenny Jensen, I need Jenny Jensen's monster violinist, and Matt Hall. Oh, yeah, he's a great, <laughs> what? Chalice? Chalice. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. I C E eight uh Blackbird, Lincoln Trio, New Juilliard, Trinity Wall Street, Ameri American Composers Orchestra, uh, uh Liszt's Chamber Orchestra, New Music USA. Uh it goes on a list that goes on and on and on and on for a for harmonic even. So um yeah, her uh her honor include uh, fellowships from the Guggenheim form uh Kutzwitzki Foundation. Can you say that? Kutzwitzki. Kutzwitzki. We yeah. even, I even played there with my trip. 
Yeah. Oh, fabulous. Ice cream field. Yes. We actually played uh, the, 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 what's his name? The, the Polish composer, very famous. Oh, uh, um, Lutoslawski or um, no. Penderecki. Penderecki. Or... We played, my trio performed the Penderecki uh, string trio. And then oh. we, yeah, and we gave the recording, live recording to his like a 75th birthday or something like that. Oh, that's fabulous. Yeah. So, Channel Music America, that's where I met uh, Jeffrey. Uh, many, many, Harvard Music Association, Copeland House, you name it. So you have done so much and you are still so young. How did that happen? Oh, I don't know. I, I, I don't think I'm that young. <laughs> I feel older every year. Uh, but, uh, I think, yeah, I think I just joke with my students that um, it's because, you know, I'm, I've been around long enough to have acquired all these things and I just keep composing because it's an obsession and I, you know, and, and after a certain point, um, you know, people ask for pieces or the commission pieces and then you it's become it it's your life you know mm -hmm. right um so right. yeah but uh i and i i'm unbelievably lucky because i've been able to work with some of the greatest players in the world yeah. and singers in the world and yeah. um in fact i just finished a piece for matt heimovitz for a, a series that he's doing um, a Primavera project. So, mm -hmm. you know, two weeks ago, I got to do a Zoom workshop session with him and he's recording it in January. Wow. That's so wonderful. I'm, I'm spoiled. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about uh, your upbringing, like, like how, where you grew up and how did you become music, uh, musician? Um, I was born in Mexico City. And my parents were exchange students there at the university. I see. And um, my father's always been very musical. His his grandfather was a cantor in a, oh. in a village in, in, in now Poland, but it used to be Russia. I see. And um, he played music for us on Saturday and Sunday mornings. You know, he'd wake us up with Beethoven's Ninth or Shostakovich <laughs> Five. You know, we'd, we'd be in bed sleeping at eight o'clock and boom, boom, boom. You know, just this craziness, you know. <laughs> and it's just really, you know, it got our ears going and, um, and he also played the concertina and sang sea shanties. He's a scholar mm -hmm. about um, sea shanties. And strangely enough, Chinese sea shanties. That's part of the reason why I have a Chinese American husband because <laughs> growing up, all of yeah. my dad's best friends were colleagues of his from the Chinese Historical Society of America in San Francisco. I see. So I guess it was about, um, I don't know, I was about six or seven. I asked for a piano. My parents bought for $50 the ugliest gray <laughs> piano. It looked like a coffin, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and I would sit down and I wrote, I was writing little songs by yeah. the time I was seven and eight. Wow. And then my, my parents thought, oh, well, I guess she's got some talent at this. So when I asked to learn the piccolo, a friend, dear friend of ours said, don't get her a piccolo, get her a flute. She learns how to play the flute. <laughs> She'll play the flute. <laughs> you still play? I still play. Oh, I do. Play play. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and, and, you know, it's funny. I wear these very big rings because uh -huh. I have a, a terrible cut that I got from washing a, a cup about oh. 20 years ago. Oh, no. And I couldn't make a fist for a year. Oh, so no. my, my technique is not as good as it used to be. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. I have lipstick on, and it's really <laughs> hard to play the flute with lipstick. It's kind of <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So you, you, you're welcome to play any, any time. So, so, yeah. You want to do it? You want to just play something? Oh no! I mean, no, no oh. you, no. Okay. It would just like <laughs> okay. It'd be too messy. Too yeah. messy. Yeah. But the, but 
but you know that got me playing yeah. in youth orchestras oh. and from there i started writing for the youth, or the youth orchestras i played in yeah so i played in the berkeley youth orchestra young people's symphony orchestra oakland symphony youth orchestra yeah. and i wrote pieces for two of them oh and then, then that was it. You know, once I started writing for these youth orchestras, yeah. um, I I was you know hooked on it, and I went yeah. to the San Francisco Conservatory to work, study with John Adams, who's my first teacher. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. which was you know an astounding thing to get to work with John Adams right off the bat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The the minimal, yeah, minimalist, right? Yeah, and yeah. and you know I think that my graduate work was also in the Bay Area, I went back to the Bay Area to work with Andrew Embry, who was my main teacher at the mm -hmm. University of Wisconsin, oh, sorry, University of California, Berkeley. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're kind of similar institutions because they're in yeah. semi-progressive um, cities yeah. and um, and they're both flying universities, public in universities. But um, Andrew's music, of course, is very different mm. than John's music. Yeah. And I think that Andrew's music and John's music, this love of kind of richness mm -hmm. um, and harmonic richness, but the counterpoint that you hear in Andrew's music and music of, hi of composers like him mm. kind of merged in me. Right. You know? Right. Um, and so my music isn't minimalist at all. I mean, no. I, I have a couple of pieces that are kind of... You know, they, they they have a little bit of that influence, but most of my music, I think, would be considered kind of more complex, kind of richer, harmonically, um, mm. uh, more contrapuntal. Mm. Mm. But I mean, I love John's music. I think he's yeah. a really great composer. Yeah, yeah. Can we can we hear another uh, sample, uh, another excerpts of your music? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Yeah. So let's see which one. Tell well, I, the first on that list that I gave you um, yeah. is uh, uh, the, the gold aria from okay. the gold uh, aria. from the opera. Yeah, okay. it's um, it's where Artemisia is looking at her self portrait, and she's saying it needs more gold because her eyesight is failing her, mm. and she wants it to be brighter, and it's and it's not as bright as she wants it to be, and mm. so that's what she's singing about. Okay. Yeah, I'm having a time to uh, see. So I'm going to go back to the uh, to the original list. Hold on a second. OK. <clears throat> so uh, keep talking when I'm <laughs> looking because <laughs> I sure. lost the, the, the I, I have them line up, but then the uh, the title sometimes doesn't show, you know. Oh, so, of course. Yeah, yeah. Hold well, on. I put it in the chat with you, so okay. it's there as well. But um, yeah. it's 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 attached to her famous painting, which is called "The Self Portrait as Allegory Is Art." Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I saw the gold aria now. Okay. This one. Okay. Self portrait. Oh, okay. So portrait, okay. Then we go back here. Um, self portrait, okay. Yeah, here we go.
has been bled six times, and your eyes grow weaker. Let me give us a microphone back. Thank you. Beautiful. <laughs> that's beautiful. Yes. So, um, yeah, that's this. It, it, the music to to me, your music to me, uh, actually, uh, it's 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 tonal. It's tonal. It is. It's this. It's in this Mental kind of in between space between pre tonality uh -huh. and tonality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So um, now, tell us a little bit. Um, do you do you have like a major influence, like from classical composers, uh, composers to your music and your thoughts? I yeah. There. I mean, there there are um, many French composers I idolize. Debussy mm. and Ravel, of course, and um, and then in this century, Dutilleux, who is just one of my absolute favorites. And then, of course, there is this this you know free tonal aspect of my music, and so from that end, Ligeti or mm. um, uh, even those American composers, even more so, I think, like Andrew Imbury or George Pearl or Gunther Schuller or um, uh, any number of those amazing. Seymour Schifrin is a composer who's not whose music is not played that much anymore, mm -hmm. but I think is extraordinarily beautiful music. And there mm -hmm. there is the sense of line and beauty in it. And um, the, all of those composers have had a great influence on me, and I've probably stolen from every one of them. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. 
So uh, should we should we introduce? Oh, tell tell us a little bit about Composer World. Like I'm not really uh, that familiar. I I uh, I'm a, actually I'm a violist. Uh, Jeff told me about that. That's wonderful. <laughs> Viola is my favorite instrument. I have a colleague here, um, Sally Chisholm, who plays with the Pro Arte String Quartet. And um, I, you know, I adore her and I adore her studio. And I think Viola may be my favorite instrument of all instruments. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Have you ever written string trio? I, yeah, I have actually. Yeah. You know, my my forty eight hour piece at UC Berkeley for my my degree, my PhD, yeah. was a string trio. Oh yeah, and that piece actually won my first major award with the American Academy of Arts and Letters. I won a wow. an Ive scholarship with that piece, and um, so yeah, I do. I'll send it to you if you want to hear it. I was what year? Do you remember? Oh, that was night. That was a long time ago. This tells you how old I am, for your <laughs> listeners. It was in 1993. Oh yeah. So I I may go back, uh, look to my library. I may have your <laughs> string trio, because I oh. I because because I remember your name is so long that I don't know how to pronounce. <laughs> that I remember, and it was like a, a vertical uh, a score like huge. I don't oh yeah, that when I was doing large formats, yeah, scores, yeah. like 11 by 17. Do you ever remember sending to Jade a string trio? I don't know if you remember us, but I was like asking for scores those years. Yeah, I don't know. So I, I, my, I, I, I might have, I might yeah. have, cause I remember, you know, um, this, the string trio that played this piece many times, uh -huh. they, they wrote me a list of maybe 10 string trios that they really respected. Yeah. And I think I remember your string trio oh, really? on that list. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my God. Oh. Yeah. So yeah, I performed, I founded a Jade string trio in uh, oh. 1999. And we played for about more than 10 years. And mm -hmm. so we kind of not playing anymore because many reasons. One is uh, our violinist became a full-time uh, Broadway uh, player, Broadway, oh. you know, like uh, Broadway shows. So that's kind of hard. And also our cellist left at a certain point. And, and then I became fascinated with filmmaking, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I think that's so exciting. I mean, filmmaking is really one of the most interesting of the arts. I think. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's 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 yeah. I I can sit here, you know, turning around film for fifteen hours, but I can play the viola for two hours. You know, because mm -hmm. it's a very different discipline. Yeah. You know? So yeah, I you know I teach a, a class on film music, and so really? Really? I I'm a film buff. From way oh, back, really? yeah. Wow. Paul Sh Paul Shihara, who was one of my teachers, who, who has oh. also written. You know Paul. Oh. Yes, we 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 recorded his string trio, Paul's string trio, nineteen eighty five. Oh, fabulous. Yeah, we recorded it for Albany label, and uh, this is one of the you know one of the best our favorite string trio works we play. I believe it. He is yeah. an amazing composer, and he's just the one of the sweetest, loveliest people. Yeah. I know, I know. He you know, <laughs> cats. He'll send me pictures of cats of his cat, and he'll like wear a ridiculous, you know, t-shirt with the cats on it, and uh, and it was like funny, very funny. <laughs> When he stayed, he stayed with us when uh, he and presented to my film students oh, one year, oh, and yeah. he stayed up to like three in the morning with our cats in the living room, getting to know them. And when he and when he left, they were really depressed for days because Paul had left. You know? Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, yeah. I actually interviewed Paul uh, a few months ago, so that's a really nice, uh, nice. So I'll, I'll email you the um, the link. Yeah, I would love to see it. He's, eight, he's over eighty. I know, but he has the energy of a seventeen-year-old. I, I know, <laughs> incredible. You know, Paul was actually at the premiere of my opera. 
Oh really? Yeah. Wow. And after after I knew I knew so, I'd done something right because because yeah. Paul I mean Paul is very supportive, but also when you when you go the wrong direction, Paul lets you know. You know he's pretty honest, right. which is one of the things I love about him. I adore about him. Yeah. And after the after the opera was finished, I heard a sniffle because <laughs> <laughs> it ends very sadly. And I looked over and there was Paul, and he had like a tear in his eye. Oh. And I said Paul. Paul, he said, oh, Lauren, he gave me a yeah. hug. It's like, okay, now I can die. Yeah. This is <laughs> I just put a note there, Paul Chihara. That's the person we're talking about. So check him out. Yeah. So, yeah, anyway. Um, so, yeah. So should we do another excerpt? Sure. That sounds good. Okay, great. So I'm going to just go back to our correspondent and then it's easy to find so which one you want to show us well you know we just had kind of a dreamy um, <laughs> um, music. Yeah. so you yeah. know what we could what we could do is we could go to the last excerpt from the opera um and of course then maybe after that some chamber yeah. music yeah or, or castle music because it yeah, seems yeah. like all i do is opera but yeah i Opera was late in my life. And in, in fact, I'm working on a new opera, but yeah, okay. um, for most of my career, I've written for, you know, orchestral instruments and chamber yeah. music. Yeah. But I um, hear chamber music. Yeah. Yeah. We, we could do an instrumental, in okay. fact. How about and, uh, uh, it's This Jack is quartet? a shh. Yeah, um, yeah. The Jack Quartet would be fabulous. Should we do um, that? Yeah, and and it has this little vid this um, uh, video animation as well. So for filmmaker like you, that might you might find that interesting. Oh yeah, well. that this is a very short excerpt from the the quartet, and it's about the Tasmanian devil. And the idea behind this quartet, yeah, is that it has eleven short movements. Oh. Um, and by the way, this is available on Albany Records. So if any of your if your viewers um, or anyone listening uh, is interested in it, yeah, they they can get the the recording from Albany or on, on Amazon or you know anywhere yeah. Albany Records are sold. Yeah. And this little um, vignette, which is just over a minute, really, is oh, yeah. of this animal called the Tasmanian Devil, which is very. It's very cute, but it is it is a very fierce little animal. It has a very destructive bite, and it's very endangered. And the idea behind this this quartet uh -huh. is that each one of these creatures, the first group are extinct creatures, yeah. the next group are mythological creatures, and the yeah. final group are very endangered creatures. And the Tasmanian devil uh -huh. is extremely endangered. There are, you know, a few thousand left in the wild, wow. and that's it. Wow. Um, so this, it's, uh, sorry, it's, 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 oh, it's very dramatic. <laughs> Uh, Laura, this video is 20 minutes long. How long should we be? Yeah. So I think you want to go to um, 12 minutes and 17 seconds in. Oh, okay. 12. And you'll know the ending because the sound is all behind the, the fingerboard on the, on the <laughs> little windings. And it sounds like, ah, which is the sound of the Tasmanian oh. devil, basically. <laughs> 12, did you say 12 minutes, 20 seconds? Uh, 12 minutes, 17 seconds. Oh, 17. Okay. Okay, right here, and then end end at the end. Um, it ends at thirteen forty. Did they funny? Okay, okay. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
scratchy, scratchy, scratchy. <laughs> that literally sounds, it's on the instruments, on the string yeah. quartet, but yeah. it's literally exactly what the Tasmanian, Tasmanian yeah. devil sounds like. Yeah. If you were talking to a sound file of it, you'd go, oh my gosh, that sounds yeah. just like the Tasmanian devil. Yeah. They're such sweet looking little animals, but they're really fierce. Right, you know? right. They yep. eat. They eat a whole mouse, and nothing is left. <laughs> they eat the bones and oh, all. Wow. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's beautiful. Wow. It's uh, very dramatic. Uh, very, uh, the texture is very, very interesting, and you know, and with the, they, they performed so well, also. Oh, um, they're they're just such a great quartet, and we we did a whole CD together. That the Creature Quartet, and they did a number of other pieces on that CD with yeah. Albany as well. Yeah. yeah. So where where is Jack Quartet now? Like, do you do you know where they resident? Yeah, they live. Most of them live in in New York, oh. and um, they are uh, you know they're concertizing like crazy they're you know recording like crazy yeah. they they recorded a cd of john luther adams music not too long ago that i think it was nominated for a grammy or won a grammy i don't know oh, yeah. so they this piece this particular cd um albany nominated for a grammy oh. when it came out last year so nice. um it's it, it's it was it was really very fun and it's about to be played actually um in iowa at the the university of iowa the center for contemporary music they have a this wonderful center and yeah. that's in february wow and what town do you know because i went and, to iowa uh i went to iowa canvassing for andrew yen so oh uh, yeah fabulous <laughs> <laughs> I went to Iowa for two weeks. So oh, I was in wow. Des Moines. I was in Des Moines. I was in uh, Iowa City. I was in uh, Waterloo. Uh, uh, three different cities to a canvas and um, shoot, yeah, shoot film. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, this was this is in Iowa City. Iowa City. And, yeah. It's a it's you know, a Iowa small City. Town. Iowa it's City. A great town. It's a great town. So chic. Yeah. You it's know, chic. so chic. They even have like hot pot Chinese restaurant right next to our hotel. <laughs> you know, That's we walk, fabulous. I know. We walk on the street and find all kinds of restaurants. And we walk <laughs> into a Chinese place and they had a hot pot. Can you That's believe great. that? In the yeah. middle of nowhere. <laughs> I totally believe it because, you know, that facility at the university is so beautiful i mean it's like very european and sleek and uh -huh. you walk into the atrium and it's enormous and then you know even in front of the the classrooms and the practice rooms they have these little seats that yeah. are covered with this really great um like um soft uh woolen material so yeah no i totally believe it and the hall is fabulous so yeah, yeah i'm totally jealous of that space <laughs> david gomper who yeah. directs the the institute there the center for contemporary music um yeah. He, you know, he's he's a phenomenal composer, really great composer. And yeah. his program is excellent. And they had me for four days last year wow. where I came and I taught less, lots of lessons. Yeah. I was so tired by the end of each yeah. day. Yeah, and yeah, then they yeah. did a concert with my music. And one of the pieces of my teacher, Ollie Wilson, who also yeah. taught at UC Berkeley, an amazing African-American composer. Wow. And it was a it was really a fun residency. So I'm with you. I know those restaurants because I was eating there every day. Yeah. You know, <laughs> this is amazing about America. You know, it's like you think some city in Iowa would be very uh, secluded, right? Not you know, not very variety of things that they offer. But I was wrong. Yeah, so Iowa City is so cool, and I. I mean, this is off off the record. Like, like we stayed in in a really cool uh, hotel. Actually, it's called Graduation Hotel. I don't know if you happen to stay there. I did stay there. That's where I stayed. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> I loved that, that hotel. You know why? It was amazing. Okay. The wall is decorated with pencils. Do you remember? 
I remember art everywhere. Yes. And I had a big window that looked out, you know, at this great view of the city. Yes. Yeah, the church and stuff. And it's very beautiful. So anyway, yeah, very, very good. Memory. <laughs> Found the memory of Iowa City. Yeah. So, well, tell us a little bit about what your current project. Are you working on something or you working on many different things? Well, I, you know, I just finished this piece for Matt Heimovitz, the solo cello piece um, yeah. that he's recording in, in January. Um, and then um, the big project I'm working on, and I've been working on all summer with my cousin, Lenny Schwendinger, who's a lighting expert and a lighting artist. And she did many things. I mean, she did the front of the Seattle Opera House, the, the, uh, the lighting art that's in front of the Seattle Opera House. She did the back of the Port Authority, those little tunnels that you walk in that are kind of green. That's her work. Wow. She lit the Coney Island parachute drop. Wow. I think it, they, they've taken it down since then, but it was up for a long yeah. time. Yeah. And, um, and she, you know, she's an amazing lighting expert. And she um, uh, she's doing the lighting for this piece. Mm. And Ginger Strand, who is the librettist for Artemisia, is doing the libretto for this piece. And it's called um into the into the night or or we're talking about titles now because we're mm. not sure um the color of night perhaps mm. but it's about um paris at the turn of the century mm. at les folles bergeres where the night spots happened and art was created it was created by women not just men mm. and it was um you know led by feminists and really interesting beautiful women, some who were lesbians and lived the, their lives out in the open. You know, mm -hmm. they they lived with their lovers and they and they were very, you know, open about their lifestyle mm -hmm. and about their art. And that to me is really exciting. This idea that any, you know, that anything is open mm -hmm. and you're free to express who you are, you mm -hmm. know. Right. And um uh that's part of the reason I was interested in it. I was also just interested in the art and the music of the period. Right. And so it's for chamber ensemble and um, for singers. And it's mm. going to be done by uh, Musiqua, Tony Brandt's group in Texas, and by the Third Eye Theater in Chicago. Mm. And um, we just got a From Foundation commission for it. So wow. we're a little excited. Ken Wayno and wow. some other friends of mine were on that listing yeah. of the other composers granted for this yeah. year. So yeah, it's kind of a family affair in a way. Wow. That's wonderful. So now to me, um, being a composer is kind of abstract. It's like, how do you tell someone, you know, like, okay, now you'll go, when you grow up, you're going to be a composer. And uh, it's like, it's like a, almost like being a filmmaker, you know, it's like, <laughs> you know, so, so tell us a little bit, like, how would you tell your student if someone wants to be a composer or make a living as a composer, what are the most important, like three or four things they need to do? <sighs> Well, you know, it, it it's it's a hard profession. I mean, I think people when they're young think, oh, I'm gonna, you know, take on the world and I'm gonna have this huge career. And the thing is, even if you're fairly successful, like I've won almost everything you can win, except for maybe four or five things, you know. I'm still waiting for my Pulitzer. Donald <laughs> Cub. I was nominated this year, but I didn't win. Yeah. Um and, you know, but I've won a, you know, fair number. I've won two Gusevitskis and two Fromm Foundations. I, I can't win any more of them. You only are allowed to win it twice. <laughs> I've been to the McDowell Colony 12 times and the Yaddo Colony 10 times. Yeah. So I've, I've, I'm very lucky. I've been played many places, many, you know, famous venues and by many famous people. Um, but it, it is, it is an ongoing thing. You have to really want to do it. And you also just have to be obsessed by the music in your head. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it, it composition, this has been said by other far greater composers than me and mm -hmm. far greater thinkers, but I like the sentiment of it. It's, you don't choose composition. It chooses you. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. you know, and if you're not obsessed by it, if you don't hear things in your head, you know, right, you hear these sounds and you want to produce these sounds, you know, um, then you, 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 you know, you're probably not doing yourself a favor by going into composition, mm -hmm. you know, become a doctor or a lawyer, <laughs> something where you're going to make a lot of money because, <laughs> right. you know, even, even my friends who are very, you know, that like the most famous composers working today, mm -hmm. um, even they from time to time find themselves, you know, um, um, battling for, for their rights and for fees and for, um, you know, just, just making it from time to time. I remember very early on when I was at the McDowell Colony, the very first time I was there, I won't tell you the composer is because that would betray a confidence, but there was a composer there that was quite famous during this period of time. Mm. And um, he's still famous, but, you know, at, at this moment, he was extraordinarily famous. Every orchestra was commissioning him. Mm. And he was, um, you know, on the phone every single day. We had a public phone because, you know, we, cell phone usage there is very bad. <laughs> and he was in those phone booths talking to various schools, trying to get just a visiting gig because he had some issues with his teeth. And he wanted he wanted insurance so that it would cover his dental work, which I find just you know fascinatingly yeah. interesting. Yeah, and he was very famous, so you know it. He didn't want to teach full time, which I totally get because it eats up your energy sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful on other days because your students are so creative and. I love my students. I mean, I adore them. Some days I leave and I stop teaching them and I'm tired, mm -hmm. but then I'm left with this afterglow of their personalities and mm -hmm. of their talent. And, um, and I learn from them, you know, it keeps me fresh, you know? <laughs> right. But uh, yeah, so it's, it's not an easy profession, but you should hear things in your head and be obsessed by sounds mm -hmm. and be, by, be obsessed by rhythms. And, you know, I'll walk past a construction site mm -hmm. and most people would just like keep it out of their head, but I'll, yeah. I'll walk past a construction site and I'll go home and I'll hear something like, you know, You know, and that'll get stuck in my head, and yeah, I'll yeah, think, yeah. "Oh yeah. no, yeah. I gotta, I gotta do something." <laughs> you need to resolve it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you, you have the piano right there. Can you play for us a little bit? Well, I'm not really a pianist. I'm a better flutist, but okay. you know, I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> there we go a composition now <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think actually there was one chord change in there that i might do something with later but... <laughs> do you know do you know there's a, a joke joke uh, you probably know um like either Haydn or or somebody's uh father like uh, in the morning right like so they just play a scale you know Da da di da 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 di. Just leave it there, you know. <laughs> and then the kid would just coming down the stairs. And <laughs> no, <laughs> he has to solve it. <laughs> he has to resolve it. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, listen, I had roommates years ago when I was in 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 um you know an undergraduate program. I had a roommate that drove us all crazy by doing that. She, you know, she'd play a scale. And she'd stop. <laughs> and we had this kind of who's gonna <laughs> walk over the piano and go like this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we would fight it because you know she was messing with us, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's funny. That's funny. Oh gosh. So <laughs> you want should we play uh something? Another something? I have a uh soundtrack is a sound. It's just a sound. Oh yeah, that's 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 just that? sound, but it's it's a it's a it's a you know what it's an effervescent um, little excerpt from a piece called Artist's Muse. Mm -hmm. 
oh, yeah. that was written about um, seven different portraits of female uh, of, of, of of females of women oh. by male artists. And if I think I had to do it all over again, I would pick some female artists as well. But oh. these were portraits that I really loved. And oh. this one yeah. is a portrait of Adele Bloch Bauer, the woman in gold. Oh. Do you remember this movie that came out a number of years ago? Uh -huh. This beautiful Klimt painting that's at the Neue Gallery in New York. Oh. And it's just stunning. It's beautiful yeah. gold. And yeah. this is my little character portrait of that painting. Uh -huh. And it's sad because she's not particularly happy. You know, it's like uh -huh. she's a she's a, a society woman. Yeah. Um, she comes from a Jewish family living in Vienna. Her yeah. family's her, her family's art was actually looted by the Nazis. Oh. So it's very effervescent and it's very gold and very shiny. But there is a little it's it's tinged with a little bit of poignancy. Yeah. This, this excerpt. So Should that's the setup. Bit? Sure. Yeah, that, that sounds great. OK. Beautiful. Oh, thank you. Thank yes. You. <laughs> Here, um, whoops, let me turn it off. <clears throat> so is that off? Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> it kicks you yeah. into a dog. That's the the what we just heard that accidentally went there is a is a the very opening of a different piece of mine, which is for orchestra and it ha you can hear similar colors, and the, oh, these are yeah. colors I'm, I'm kind of obsessed with. Kind you know? of, a, kind of a little bit like impressionism, a little bit. Yeah, that French thing. French. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, great. Anything else uh, we haven't touched about? You want to talk about? Um, um, well, you, um, you know, the, the interesting thing is, um, I think about composition is that you, you really have to follow your muse. You know, I mean, when I think of this work that I just, you know, shared with you with the artist's muse, um, what makes uh, composition such an interesting thing to do and, and, and also so enjoyable and so rewarding is each piece you make is a child. Mm. And this child, uh, you know, you've you've made this child just to your specifications. You know, it's your DNA, right. but you've created something that's just what you want, you know? Yeah. 
-hmm. And, um, uh, you know, I, I guess I would just like to, to give advice if anyone's listening to any composers out there, especially younger composers. And I think my students probably are listening. And they've heard a bunch of master composers giving master classes at in my in Zoom sessions at master class for my my class at the university this last semester. But they haven't heard me talk about this really. Mm -hmm. It's just that you really have to stick to your what you hear, you know, what's inside your own imagination, mm -hmm. and not try to make music that you think will please other people. Because the problem with that is that everyone is different, you know? And as you've heard a range of my music today, you've heard, you know, Tasmanian Devil, which is very Ludoslavsky, very Ligeti kind of, yeah. know, very, you know, extreme, a modern in a way, um, all the way to the windings of the strings, you know, these noises. And then what we just heard was very almost romantic, almost French and very pretty, right. that, 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 that it's the gamut of things that you know, I I try to do, and you never know what piece will strike different people. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I think I'm writing for a certain audience, and I might even, you know, go to that dark place where I'm trying to write just for them, and mm -hmm. just that, you know, just that way. Right. And then I find out they don't really, you know, it wasn't what they really wanted, or. I do, I say, oh, this is what I want to do. And I don't really, you know, they want the piece, but I have to do this because this is what my piece is telling me to do. Right. And it may be really far out and they just get into it. You know, it's like they fall in love with it. And the audience, the audiences, you never know. You know, I've had pieces played in, in New York, you know, and gotten great reviews in the New York Times, which I'm really pleased about. Hmm. But, um, you know, but there have been some audiences who I think, oh, they're really sophisticated audiences. They'll get this. And they don't maybe quite get it. Right. Right. Whereas, you know, the same piece might have been premiered in Oklahoma City and I get a standing ovation. Mm. So you you never know what the audiences are going to want. They, it, it, everybody's different. And just if you stick to what you're sincere, how you feel sincerely right. about what you want to say that's going to do you best in the long run, you know, because you're going to yeah. be making stuff you love. I yeah. really, I really, really thank you for saying that because um, I am, I am actually struggling uh, to put a, a feature documentary together. I've been working on it for the last, like, say, five, four months. And so, uh, because it's like, a, you know, it's 10 months of shooting uh, following NGN, and, um, and then I put it together. So I show it to different people. Um, yeah, some people, a lot of people say it's too long, which I understand it's too long. Because uh, mm -hmm. typically a documentary film, if you wanted to enter film festival, is about one hour. One hour or maybe one hour and, you know, uh, 75 minutes. Mine is right now is 94 minutes. So it's still too long for some people. And uh, people think uh, I say the same things, but I actually intentionally say same same thing. Like the people were canvassing, you know, in Iowa, canvassing in New Hampshire, canvassing in New York City. So a lot of canvassing, you know, people just <laughs> boots on the ground, walk. I actually intentionally put it there with different people, though. But then people say, why are you showing me the same thing? You know, um, so <laughs> so it's very interesting. Do I follow my wish or do I respect other people's opinion? So there is always a balance there. But mm -hmm. what you said is very, very important. Deep down, you know, it's your art, you know, mm -hmm. right? I mean, we don't want to torture our audience, though. We don't, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, <Sometimes. laughs> but, but you know, it's 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 funny because in my opera uh, there was a similar thing came up yeah and um of course with opera you end up cutting things because things that you think are very important you find out may take away from the directness mm -hmm. and christopher alden who directed the opera in new york did some excellent cuts and asked us, you know, before he did it, but he did some cuts that were just perfect because he's a genius, first of all. Secondly, because he's directed so many operas, he really had a sense of this. Right. And we learned tons from him and he's, you know, just brilliant. I mean, he's really brilliant. But, but 
there are some things. There's a section where she's singing about the the, the day that she was raped. Yeah. And she's singing um, Through the Eyes of Susanna and the Elders, which is a famous painting yeah. of, of uh, Artemisia's. And she is trying to forget this experience mm. by repeating mm. this mantra of I am in my garden with my bees and the honey and the birds. Mm. And it repeats quite a bit. Mm. And some people have said, oh, that's too much repetition. But the whole point of it is that it's how she's getting out of, right? The, yeah. the, 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 this, you know, feeling of being harassed by these old men who want yeah. to, who want to do her harm. Yeah. So the whole point is that it, the repetition is like this mantra thing. Right. And so I totally hear you when you said that. It's just like, you know, things went off in my head. That sounds so familiar. So you know, trust your muse, Ching. Trust your muse. I think your muse is probably the best muse. Uh -huh. Yeah. I, I, I just, I, I can't wait to see this. You have to send me a link. I when will. it's done, I'll go and see the premiere. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to send it to you, you know, like the, the kind of sort of un, unfinished cut, you know. So I, I'm actually having a private uh, watch party on January 4th um, on YouTube. Oh, yeah. The fabulous. January 4th is my birthday. Oh, just, are you uh, are you a Capricorn or Aquarius? Capricorn. Capricorn. I'm I'm January 26th. Oh, so I'm just after you. So yeah. Wow. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, I am a rat. You are a dog. I think. No, you are a. Wait. I'm a tiger. Are you a tiger? Really? I'm a oh, tiger. Okay. And you met my husband Menzi, yeah. right? He's, yeah. He's an ox. <laughs> ox. Oh. Okay. Oh, ox. Okay. Okay, January twenty sixth is a tiger, really? Yeah, it's okay. the year. Well, it's the year of the tiger, but I don't know. Okay, okay. okay. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Year of the tiger. Sorry, sorry. I was yeah. thinking about month. Yeah, <laughs> January. There's a lot of people's birthdays on January. Yeah, like it's a great uh, month. My, my husband's birthday is January twenty third. Oh, uh, that's so great. And then our godmother is twenty first. And Andrew Yan's birthday is January 13th. Oh, Andrew. <laughs> oh, that's fabulous. That's fabulous. And Mozart is Mozart. January 24th or 5th. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, cool. January, yeah. <laughs> Should we do the rapid fire? Oh, yeah, that sounds great. That sounds like fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I like to I like to do that with my guests. It's just the fun. Yeah. All right. So it's supposed to be like uh like a quick question and quick answer, okay? Yeah. Oh, oh, before we do that, I uh we have some uh <clears throat> we have some guests with us, uh, but no one has written anything yet. So thank you for being with us anyway. Um I wanted to tell you um uh yeah, I do this uh, uh, live talk show every Wednesday. Sometimes I will add on Monday and Friday. Like this week, I'll do three shows. Uh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, I ta I've talked to lots of composers, uh, lots of lady <laughs> composers. Yeah, thanks to uh, uh, Jeffrey. And then I, I talk to politicians, uh, people running for Congress, people running mm -hmm. for councilmen. And I talk to young Gan, I talk to my husband, my child. My son is a violist uh, in Juilliard. Yeah, a, a, a fabulous violist. Um, and so I talk to a lot of people. So today, I think it, you are episode either 76 or 77. I need to double oh, wow. check. Yeah, so That's so impressive. it's really nice. It's uh, it's it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a nice way of seeing people during the lockdown, right? Mm. So yeah, I miss people. I miss giving people hugs. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> me too. Me too. Yeah. So okay, let's and and I'll oh, thank you for uh, those of you if you are there not uh, haven't subscribed my. YouTube channel, please do so. Laura, please subscribe my YouTube channel. Yeah. I will. I think I did, but I oh, will yeah. if I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Um, uh, let's see. All right. Rapid fire. Um, okay. So what's your favorite color? Blue. 
lots of blue, lots of people. Yeah, blue. yeah, I have the blue. That actually, red is my second favorite color, and you can see. Oh, I love uh, red. Yeah, I can see. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I love red. <laughs> I love red. Red and blue. Um, so, uh, if you had a luxurious time, you don't have to work. You you don't have to worry about work. Uh, you were uh, how many like you can you can live in four cities per every year for three months of each city. Which are four cities do you like to live? Uh, Paris. I love Paris. Me too. Um, I really love Paris. Aix en Provence oh. in the south of France, which is one of my favorite cities. New York has to be yeah. because New York is yeah. just incredible. Nice. And, it's, <laughs> and San Francisco. So which just, is where my parents still live and, oh, and is the barriers yeah. happen. I love yeah, it. Yeah. One more. One more. City. Oh, one more. I get one more. Oh gosh. Ah! Oh, okay. <laughs> I know. I know. Valletta. Oh yeah. In What's Malta. Valletta? It's Where's in Malta. Valletta? Which oh. it's an island that's um south of Italy. Ooh. And it's like Italy in many ways, but a little bit different. And Valletta is the main city. It's the capital city of oh. Malta. And it's beautiful. It's this medieval city. It's so old. And the wow. food is like Italian food, but oh. all seafood. And yeah. it's just lovely. The, sea, wow. the, the sunsets are the most beautiful things you've ever seen. Wow. Wow. This sounds so good. So good. Now talking about food, what is your favorite uh, genre of food? Oh, it has to be Chinese food. <laughs> that's, that's politically correct. Politically correct. <laughs> well, it's, it's like what my husband knows how to do and he's a really great cook. Oh, um, but yeah, you know, in Madison, we don't have very good Chinese food. I, I hate to say that. I'm sorry, other Madisonians. <laughs> we ha we have okay Chinese food. But in yeah. San Francisco, because yeah, there's yeah. such a big Chinese population, you know, yeah. you have Sichuan and Hunanese and, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. all these great. So, I, you know, anything like a Sichuan shrimp with, you know, a, a little spicy, a little yeah. sweet. Oh, right. gosh, that's right. heaven. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So if you win lottery tomorrow, what are you going to do? 25 million. Oh, 25 million. I'll buy a little island off of the Croatian coast. <laughs> get myself a, a Steinway M. <laughs> Bring my husband and my cats and my dog with me. and Call Paul Shihar and see if he wants to join us with his wife. <laughs> all of my friends oh, just start a colony there for yeah, yeah, yeah. concerts and performers <laughs> and music makers and make music together. Yeah, sounds wonderful. Sounds wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! So, when do you drive? Do I you do. Drive? Yeah, when you drive long distance, what music do you listen to? Oh, classical. <laughs> I, I I listen to you know I listen to WC I listen to um, you know Beethoven uh, and yeah. Chopin and yeah. also if I'm gonna if if I'm gonna listen to music that my husband really really likes yeah um, we'll make we'll make sure to listen to only classical oh. but we we do like a little bit of like 1980s new wave oh, rock I see. I see. so elvis costello and the police might yeah. get in there somewhere yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny my favorite student right now and i shouldn't yeah. say that cuz my other students will go oh! but she's just she's just hilarious and she's my um assistant she did all the copying for the opera and, oh. and various other copying yeah. works She's she's brilliant at what she does, and she's a great composer as well. Yeah. Um, her name is Mong Mong Wang. Mong Mong Wang. Oh, Mong Mong Wang. She's yeah. Chinese. She's yeah. from mainland. Yeah, and she's a beautiful photographer as well. I'm going to embarrass her by saying these things. <laughs> <laughs> when we drive to Chicago, or she goes to a concert in Chicago, where I have a piece played, or she has a piece played. We will drive back together sometimes uh -huh. and I will play nothing but 80s rock and roll for her because she doesn't know any American popular music. Oh. So, you know, the Pretenders and, you know, all, the Go-Go's and all of these bands, she's she doesn't know this music at all. Yeah, so yeah. I inundate her. It partly drives her crazy, but it's fun. <laughs> 
<laughs> You're educating her. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. So uh, which book you read lately? Oh gosh, lately. Um, well, you know, I I I re I'm rereading some classics mm -hmm. because you know we're in pandemic mode. So the first few months I was reading, you know, um, novels that were just coming out, and yeah. now I'm actually reliving my youth in a way by rereading a bunch of Dickens and Austin and you know these books that I read when I was in high school and yeah. in college yeah. and um seeing them anew you know yeah. because they're different when you're older than when you're younger you know I loved them when I was younger but now I understand some of the you know the layers because yeah. I'm a little more mature yeah <laughs> <laughs> if you are not a composer, what would you be? I would be a painter. I paint as well. Um, yeah, I don't have any of my paintings behind me, but you see, I, you know, I do have other paintings right. behind right. me. Right. Um, right. And um, yeah, I, I love contemporary art. I go to museums when we visit a, a city, when we visit Paris, I'll, I'll spend you know, as much time as I can at the Louvre. So sometimes we spend a week in Paris every year. We mm -hmm. have over the last number of years with pandemic, no. But um, my husband has a, a gig at the Banque de France. So mm -hmm. his gig pays for us staying there. Mm -hmm. And then I just do things with my musical friends and I go to the Louvre all day long. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Yeah. What does, what does your husband do, may I ask? He's an economist. He's, he's actually quite a famous international economist and really? um, NPR and oh. and um, Marketplace and all of these, you know, national public radio shows oh. ask him all the time to talk about economics. What's his name again, may I? Sure, it's, it's Menzi. It's very interesting first name, M-E-N-Z-I-E. -E. Oh. And his last name is Chin, C-H-I-N-N, -N, two N's, not one N, but two N's. Oh, so he must not from mainland China. Well, his, his, his family was from the southern part of mainland. Uh-huh. Um, he said Toshan? Toisan. Yeah. yeah. So he see, speaks Toisanese mm. and, um, and, I think the reason why it's two ends and not one end, and we found this out from his father mm. very late in his father's life mm. um, because he, he, we lost him a number of years ago, which is very mm. sad because he was such mm. a lovely man, unbelievably mm. lovely. Um, he told us the story when he came to America, they asked him for the spelling of his last name and he thought, oh, there are a million chins. I'm going to say it's C-H-I-N-N -N with two ends. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be different, right? So, <laughs> Smart guy. <laughs> yeah. And Nancy's name. I mean, but this is I he's gonna hate me for saying these things. He's probably watching right now, going, Don't say this. Oh, Nancy. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know, in Chinese society, um, often the grandfather can name the children if he wants to. And so um when Nancy was born, they asked, you know, they asked my my uh, in-laws what they should name Mency. Yeah. And he was living in Manitoba, Canada. He had immigrated to Manitoba, to Manitoba Canada. And there were a lot of Scotsmen there. <laughs> and Menzies is a very famous end last name for Scotsmen, oh, the Menzies wow. clan. And so, so cool. his father, his grandfather just said, I like the name Menzi, call him Menzi. So... <laughs> He's a one of a kind. I think he may be the only Menzi in the world. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Wow. What an Im improvisational and also, you know, like has a good reason to pick a name, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's a very good story, man. <laughs> uh, very, very nice. Very nice. So two more questions. Um, uh, I, I want to take you to a bar right now. What would you, what would you order? Oh, I think either an old fashioned <laughs> or just straight Saint Germain or chartreuse over ice. <laughs> that was fast, right? I answered that really fast. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> okay, last question. Coffee or tea? Oh, tea. <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. a tea drinker. I have really? like, yeah, I must drink like five cups of tea a day. Oh, that's good. Good for you. I, I spent some time in England as a, as a, as a younger person, you know, when I was 15 and uh, studied a little bit of flute there. And yeah. um, I, I became enamored with tea while mm. we were there. And mm. since then I, you know, I, I drink, you know, Kushmi tea from Paris, Earl Grey or mm. Russian Caravan or something mm. called Traktir, Oolong. Yeah. Oolong, Chinese Oolong. Oolong. I yeah. love it. And um, and also I, I like the smoky teas. Oh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's great. Sounds great. Well, uh, Laura, this has been so much fun talking <laughs> with you. It's been so fun talking with you too, Ching. <laughs> Come and visit me on my island if I win my $25 million. <laughs> I, I will miss you. Your viola and, your, and, your, and your video I know. camera. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, make film and play the viola. That's great. That's great. All right. Wow, yeah. it's, it's so much fun. So thank you so much. And uh, say oh. hi to Menti for me and uh yeah and uh we'll keep in touch and <laughs> yeah and ask your students watch this video will be available on the channel very soon like it will be live i think it maybe it's still live i don't know but um, <laughs> it's live right now but it will become a video people can revisit you know okay wonderful yeah yeah, yeah. okay so, so in two days laura fabulous happy new two year. days Happy New Year! <laughs> Happy New Year! Yeah! 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 Yeah, we'll we'll hook up again, hopefully, Sounds sometime. Good. Yeah, when you bye come bye. to New York. Yeah, I look, will. Look up, I'll let yeah. you know as soon as yeah. pandemic's over. Oh. I, know, <laughs> I know, I know. All right, you take care. You too, bye. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And Happy New Year. And be <laughs> safe. Okay. <laughs> bye.